Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mom the Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 14. And this is called Suns Out, Buns Out. And I must say, this was probably so far of the season, this was like my favorite episode. It was actually pretty good. Um, it had some drama. Um, there de definitely still is a divide. Um, but for the most part, it was a pretty light, fun episode. And I think they just had to leave Potomac <laughs> and, or the really the United States. Because cast trips is one of those things. If you can't get it together in a cast trip, just, yeah, yeah. That, your show is not good if you can't get, get together during the cast trip. At least to make it interesting. Um, I feel bad because there is a franchise where the cast trip was not doing great. I'm not including Austin. I do not count Austin. I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> I mean, no. But with New York, the reboot, they went, I forgot where they went, but they went somewhere in the Caribbean. And it just wasn't, they were in a beautiful location. It was very ambiance and amazing, but they just, it just wasn't good. It was not good. Like, they were arguing over stupid stuff. It was really, really annoying. So, anyway, this first episode, this, this is kind of day one, day two that they're covering at this episode. And, yeah. So, anyway, I'm rambling. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, the episode continues where they left off. And, by the way, they're in the DR. And um, this is where um, Neneka got crowned the new Grand Don of Potomac. Because, and then has her area code there in the sash. And um, now NECA's doing a fun speech after being crowned the new Grand Dame. And um, the whole entire time, Wendy is wondering where Candace is. And Karen is just not taking any of it seriously. She's just like, whatever. <laughs> and, um, but while all this is happening, while she's giving her speech, which was, it was all really dumb. Um, which makes me think Neneka knew that this was going to happen, too, because we already know that um, Giselle likes to produce scenes. Um, so, yeah, she probably told Neneka ahead of time, because why would you have a speech ready? Um, or why would you even take it a step to even have a speech? But anyway, so then um, Wendy asks Candace, you know, finds Candace in her room, and as, she's going, as, they're, going, as they're both going back to the ladies... Candace say that she was just went over to get her necklace and that's this whole thing. This is so stupid. So stupid. So I was like, and this is stupid. Anyway, um, Karen and Giselle kind of bicker a little bit over this. And Karen, yeah, Giselle loves that she annoyed Candace. Like, not Candace, but annoyed Karen. And in her confessional, like, Giselle's like, yeah, you could tell when she's mad. And Karen, and Karen wasn't really mad. I think she was just annoyed. And she's like, don't play with me. Like... I think that was the case of that. But anyway. But it's a little breadcrumb of what's to come. Because <sighs> Giselle does not want peace. She never wants peace. That's just not her. Um, anyway. So while all this is happening. So before they move on, Karen actually does shade Giselle in the confessional. She's like, yeah, that wasn't um, royal behavior. That was clown behavior. And then just, you know, put the clown face. In the confessional, and it was, it was good. It was good. It was good. So anyway, uh, basically the ladies then head off. Um, they go on their golf carts. There's like four or five golf carts, so they're like kind of sharing um, as they go to play night golf. And it looked really, really fun and cool um, to do. And because they got to drive, you know, on their golf carts because they're on the island. So I mean, they could just go to where they need to go. Um, and then from there, they, um, basically get to play, get to like go in the driving range and they try to hit the things. There's like these objects that are out there that glow in the dark and they try to hit them and that's kind of the whole thing. Um, so it's really just a driving range. You're not really playing, playing golf. They're just driving balls in the driving range. Um, and, um, basically Neneka and... Mia, they're pretty decent at it. Side note, I guess I didn't know until really this season. I feel like Mia's like an athlete. Like, for real, for real. Like, every time they do something kind of extracurricular, 
she's pretty good at it. Like, like appearance. It just it just here's a show that appearance is not everything. Like. She looks very vivacious and curvy, but she's, like, athletic. <laughs> but, I mean, again, I know this firsthand because as a, as a distance runner, I know I'm not built like a typical runner, but I can run like ultras, so there's that. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, after that, um, after that little thing, because, I mean, it really wasn't that long of an event. We have... Um, Giselle, Mia, Neca, and Ashley, they're talking about Jason, which is, you know, Giselle's situationship, which I don't believe it. So I kind of just didn't really pay too much attention to what they were talking about there. But then while this is happening, um, we have Karen and Candace. They go to the side to talk. And, you know, Karen's just trying to say, hey, I wasn't bothered by what um, Giselle did because I know what it is with her. She's miserable and doesn't have anything else to do. And, um, you know, Candace is like, yeah, and, but that's what bothers me about it. Like find something else to do. And so basically they're, they're just pretty much talking about Giselle and her behavior and how she just is the problem clearly. Um, but yeah, that's how this thing pretty much concludes. They, um, well, before the commercial break. Um, and then after the commercial break, I probably should share this. Candace asked um, Kiana how they're, how she's doing, and she says she's doing better. And But in her confessional, Kiana states that she is annoyed and felt a way that Candace and Wendy did not check up on her not once. Because if you don't remember from the last episode, Kiana has basically been sick the whole entire first day of the trip. Like, and... Because she has ulcers and her ulcers were pretty much acting up during the flight there. And then it's been kind of a nightmare that whole entire day. So this was kind of the first time when she kind of was starting to feel okay. Um, but anyway, so um, the ladies do head back on their cart. And they head to dinner um, to go to one of the restaurants. And we'll, we'll talk about that next. So the ladies arrive at this restaurant and the restaurant is, has such a beautiful ambiance because this is, you know, nighttime now and they're right along the water. There's um, like kind of like a docking station with a whole bunch of boats there and they're just overlooking the water because they're on the terrace and it's really, really nice. Um, Giselle actually starts to talk up to the ladies about Grace and her going to college in Florida. And this is where the mess just starts here. Because while she's really, really kind of opening up and kind of somewhat trying to be like not messy Giselle, which if you tune into the show long enough, that's not often. <laughs> but one thing I will say about Giselle, when Giselle's talking about her kids, she's pre that's the only time when she's like being genuine, like the only time. So she really was being genuine talking about her kids. And it was meant, she actually mentioned her kids because she actually wanted to thank Karen for giving her advice to not take away Grace's moment of her, you know, progressing by just feeling a way that she's leaving. And she, you know, so it was a real moment for once that <laughs> Giselle had going on. So while all this is happening, we have Candace. And Wendy looking at each other, just mean mugging the whole thing. And I'm kind of conflicted how I feel about this. In normal circumstances, if Giselle was just talking, wasn't talking about her kids, I'll be right with them on that. Because this whole entire season, actually almost really the whole, almost two seasons of it, with Wendy especially, Giselle has done this like giving dirty looks just like side eyeing her and just kind of just being just an asshole this like to her while she's talking anytime she's talking and this time Candace is getting it too this season but the difference is I and but we don't know this because Wendy has never really talked to ladies about her children so we've never seen Giselle do this because we don't Wendy's never done that. And then Candace doesn't have kids. But this is where I'm kind of like, I don't know how I feel about it because Can Giselle's talking about her, her child. She's not talking about, like, you know, fluff. 
And so it does kind of look away that you're doing that. And I, I understand you don't like her, but like, I guess for me, I would pick and choose when I'm going to be nasty. Like, especially because, I mean, they know they're on TV. Hello. Um, I know you're supposed to pretend that you're not on TV, but they know they're on TV. And it really would probably look better if, you know, in these moments you show kindness, but then you just see um, Giselle constantly still doing like the thing she's doing. Because it actually makes Giselle look worse. But the fact that you're actually feeding into it and matching her energy to a certain degree, it actually kind of helps validate Giselle more. So it actually doesn't help. It actually makes things worse. But I see why they would do that, especially Candace. Candace is done with Giselle. We know that. Wendy, you've had this issue with Giselle for two years. So I think you could have just like not done that. And because, I mean, Giselle's already trying to ice you out. Don't make it easier, you know. And with Candace, she knows she's she knows they're trying to ice her out. But honestly, in Candace's position, I kind of... And I hate to say this because I do like Candace like a lot. I kind of think it would be a good idea that this would be her last season unless they get rid of Giselle, you know, off the show. Because Candace has way more to lose. Because Candace has a career out. She has like an acting career outside this show. She has a singing career outside this show. Like she has businesses. So this show is not the only thing she re she's relying on, unlike Giselle. Giselle, this is the only thing she's relying on. She's only relying on a Bravo check. So there's that. But anyway. So while this is happening, Robin notices it the whole entire time. And this is where she calls it out in her confessional. She's like, I know you don't like her, but like, she's talking about her kids. And maybe this is, this is one of the few times where I'm just like, maybe that is an Aries thing. Because I hate to claim Robin. I don't want to claim her because I'm an Aries too. But I hate claiming her because I'm just like. Because the way Robin acts a lot of times. I'm like, mm, I wouldn't do that. But okay. <laughs> and I'm like, let's not. So this is one of those few times I'm just like, mm, kind of got to move better when you're in the art of war. But anyway. <laughs> um. So. Wendy did actually eventually chime in um, her thoughts about Grace going to college in Florida because the whole thing is the reason why I was getting brought up even more as she was talking was because that is because Grace is going to she is going to HBCU, which was also mentioned and they were talking about that. And, you know, Giselle's happy about that because she also went to HBCU. So she's happy that she's doing that and following that path. But this is in Florida where all the black rights and brown rights are going away because of, you know, the governor down there. So, um, yeah. So then after that, shortly after that, um, <laughs> Karen being the mediator, um, thinks, you know, she thinks Giselle for sharing and says, you know, at the end of the day with this group, we all want each other to win. And I'm like, it doesn't look like that on TV, but okay, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> um, but then Giselle goes back to being messy just like that and calls out Karen regarding what she said to Mia at the necklace party. And then this leads to Mia and Karen going back and forth yet again. And girl, and by what well, I say girl, Karen, um, it was looking suspicious based off of how this outcome went. Just saying. So what happened with this back and forth, Mia's just like, I know more than what I've been sharing about your relationship. So I want, I would love it if you would stop doing that to me. And what kills me about Mia is like, she forgot, she keeps forgetting that she started this with Karen and Karen keeps reaffirming. She's like, I brought you into this group. Why would you do that? And, but then Karen kind of was lying a little bit saying that, you know, Mia's the type to talk about her behind her back. And it's like, no, that's not true. She actually said it to your face. <laughs> Similar to what, like, it's, it's some semantics. Like, they both are doing the same thing to each other. But Mia did start it. 
And Mia's pretending like she didn't do that. And it's like, girl, but you did start that. And Karen masked her energy like the true Taurus she is. <laughs> and, um, but then Mia's like, I know more than what I've been sharing. So I would like it if you would tread lightly. And Karen kind of backed off. So I'm just like, that's why I was like, uh, Karen, that will look good on your part. But I don't know. I feel like Karen just be knowing how to make good TV. So I think she did that on purpose. Because Karen's a veteran in this game. She's like, I know how to keep the story moving. And I know how to do things to keep things going. Because, yeah, I know everyone says that Giselle's the producer of the show. Karen is too. She just does it differently. It's not as obvious. Anyway. So, um, Ke um, Keanu actually switches, um, switches, and by the way, um, I want to apologize ahead of time because I don't think I'm saying this lady's name properly. I, I think it's, is it Kiana, Kiera? I, if, if I'm saying her name wrong, I apologize, but we're going to keep it pushing here. Okay. All right. But switching the focus, um, but she does switch the focus and she actually thanks Giselle for checking in on her earlier that morning. And so then she calls Candace and um, Wendy out. She's like, yo, why didn't y'all check up on me? And But they real quick deaded it and they were like, hey, we're sorry. We didn't know that was that serious. Our fault. If we would have known that you really was like not doing good, good, we would have checked up on you. We didn't know. So they basically leave and go back to the villa after this. It was a very cute little scene because day one is technically day zero. So to me, I think they did a lot for just arriving. I know normally for me, I don't count the first day of a trip. I usually try to plan an extra day to stay. So like, let's say I want to have a five day vacation. I really plan it. I really make it worth six days maybe even seven, so that, or really six, I, I could do six, because what I will do a lot of times is day one is just to get settled in, get ready to go, get, you know, get things ready for like the whole entire trip, for whatever things you didn't already have ready, and then the day two through even six, do all the things, but on day six, plan your flight where it's way later in the day. Um, not too late unless it's the summer. If it's the summertime, then you go, of course, plan a later flight because it gets darker later. Because my other thing is I don't like to arrive back home when it's too dark. And I don't want to arrive to the destination when it's too dark either. Because, you know, solo travel, safety first, that part. But anyway, that pretty much concludes that day one. So it is now day two at, in the DR, and we see a mini montage. We see Kiana and um, Karen talking about how did they sleep the night before, and both of them are like, we were tired, and I, the, what I just mentioned before, I get that. <laughs> um, Candace is FaceTiming Chris. Um, Wendy is being zen and meditating, and... Um, then Mia, Neneka, and Giselle are talking, and Mia's asking, what does she do to Karen? And it's just like, girl, you know what you did to Karen. You started, you started with her last season, and she didn't forget. Because, <laughs> yeah, she wasn't going to. And um, so then Giselle being shady, and I told you that this um, friendship... This truce that um, Karen and Giselle have, it's not going to last. It's clear it's not going to last. Um, Giselle's being shady and saying like, well, because you introduced her to the group, she wants you to basically bow down to her. And we know that's not true. That's not what it is. It's just, it's really just be respectful of her institution, as she likes to call it, her marriage. And I don't understand why none of these, be, well, I get why Giselle will continue to just talk about everyone's marriages. That's literally her, her thing. That's what she does. But Mia, you, you knew, you knew, you've seen other seasons before to know where this was going to lead you. So I don't know why she's playing, but anyway, 
so the ladies are slowly gathering to have breakfast and they're still like in their pajamas. And Mia goes in immediately being shady towards Karen and tries to be like, I'm at your service. I'm at your service. Just doing the most. And Karen's like, I left that. I left that yesterday. So I'm good. I have no problem with you. So if you want to keep doing that, that's on you. She basically gives her nothing. And I was like, oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, Karen. Um, but anyway. Um, so while all this is happening in the confessional, um, Giselle states that she will not be talking to Wendy and Candace because what they did the night before. And this is exactly what I was, why I meant why she shouldn't have did that, why they shouldn't have done that because she was going to use that excuse, even though she, she's been doing this the whole entire time, this whole season, but one thing we all know, Giselle is a freaking hypocrite of all hypocrites. The, if she was a contradiction, if, if a walking contradiction was a person, that's her. Anyway, so Robin goes to the ladies to tell them what they're doing um, for the day. They're going to play a game um, right in the you know backyard of like the villa that they're at. And the game... It actually was a fun game to watch. It was called Answer the Damn Question. <laughs> so, and I would love to play this once. Like, I would love to do a game like this, like, on the islands, too. It, it just actually did seem like a fun time for, like, a girl's trip. So, they basically had, um, she had these, all these things on cards, which I'm pretty sure the producers helped come up with. Um, and they had these buzzers. And... Whoever you, the person is asked, so the person asks you a question and you need to answer the question. If they, if the people don't believe your answer, then they buzz you. And if, depending on if you get buzzed or not, you take a shot. So if you get buzzed, you got to take a shot and they're basically drinking tequila. So it seems like a good time. So anyway, the first question is just a general question about sex. Um, I forgot what the question was, actually. It was a super general question. Oh, do they like it slow and steady or do they like it fast and hard? And most of the ladies got the, got the answer right. It's both. <laughs> you start off slow and steady and then you get to it. <laughs> when you know, you know. Anyway, so then um, the next question. Oh, by the way, all the questions are about sex. Because we saw in the previous, one of the previous episodes when they were kind of getting along, this is the only time when they get along if they're all talking about sex. Because apparently housewives are horny. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what else to say. But anyway, so the second question was to Kiana. And the question that Wendy asked Kiana was like, hey, um, have you fulfilled all of your, fan like, is there a fantasy that you want to fulfill that you've never told anyone. And Wendy buzzes her immediately. But Keanu's like, no, I really have done everything I wanted to do because like I had a hoe phase. Like, <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, same. <laughs> you know, and sometimes that phase goes and ebbs and flows. It comes back sometimes. But then, child, the next question is to win is to Wendy. So Kiana asked Wendy, like, hey, what's the longest you went without having sex with your man? And she said two weeks. And it was due, you know, and they're asking why. They're like, well, I'm not gonna do it during the time of the month. I'm like, I get that. And then they just somehow get to booty holes and holes and child you could tell ashley's already lit because she mentioned something about a third hole they're like what third hole because <laughs> they're talking about this area they're not talk. they're excluding this so there's only <laughs> but in the words of candace what sums up this whole game but the game does continue but what sums it up though is they need jesus maybe i do too a little bit um <laughs> Buddha, the Quran, whatever, they need to get that all together and just, yeah, <laughs> get right. 
So the game continues, and the next question, Wendy asks Ashley, when is the last time that she has had sex? And um, so, by the way, this show is being, I think this is now probably June or July now. I don't, because I don't remember what Ashley, hold up, I can find out when this is, because this, uh, this is around Ashley's birthday. Um, so, because I did see a preview in the next episode, they actually are going to be um, celebrating her birthday. <laughs> Because the second trip is always around her birthday. Because, they, you know, they always do two cast trips. Oh, yeah, she's June. And she's Gemini. I'm not that surprised. But anyway, <laughs> that actually makes all the sense in the world based off of how she acts um, on the show. So, anyway, she says January. And the ladies and everyone's just kind of like, really? And I forgot who asked. Someone asked, like, was it with Michael? And she's like, no. <laughs> but I don't know if I believe that. Do y'all? The reason why I'm questioning it is because clearly Michael is still helping her out, right? And we know that. But what does he get in return with helping her out? And sorry, ethically wise, I don't think the kids are enough for him to help her. Just saying. Allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly. I ain't getting in trouble with that man. No. Um, <laughs> anyway, so then Robin um, is asked next. I think she's asked by, I don't remember who she's asked by. Um, oh, Karen. Karen. No, I don't know. I forgot who, I, I forgot who asked her this. But um, what is Juan's fetish. It wasn't a direct question towards um, Juan, but she just says, what, you know, what is your partner's fetish? And she shares that basically Juan wants to watch her have sex, apparently, according to her. And of course, this leaves room for Karen to be giving the looks while all this is being said and shading her in the confessionals because I don't, I, don't believe, I don't believe that answer. But anyway, <laughs> and it, even the way Robin was describing it, she didn't believe that answer either. <laughs> and then Robin then goes to ask Giselle, athletes, models, or pastors who are best in the sack? And she does answer the question. Um, she said athletes. And then the producers in the confessional call out like, well, Jason's not an athlete, so you just kind of like shaded your situationship. And Giselle tries to clean it up, but no. <laughs> nah, girl, no. <nah. laughs> anyway, so then um, Rob asked me about the rapper. It, it was a question about the rapper. And Mia basically told her herself, because the way she answered it, she didn't answer it well at all. She basically told her herself. And Karen the whole entire time has a look on her face. But in the confessional, she's like, I'm vindicated. It doesn't feel good to be vindicated. But I, I knew. <laughs> and um, anyway. And then the next question is, um, Neneka, would you trade? who would you trade partners with? And it was a basic question. It was a basic answer. And... <sighs> I'm not gonna hold you. I really wish. Um, I feel like Neneka should be the friend of. I don't know how she's friend of because she ain't really friends with anyone for real. And then Kiana should be full time because Kiana's personality is just a lot better. Like, I, I, I keep forgetting that Neneka's there, and even when she answers questions, it's not giving anything. It's giving very dull. I don't even remember really how she answered the question. And then even the producers try to throw her a bone and, and then the confessional and ask for like a um, F. Mary Kill situation. And even how she answered that was still just dry and haterish. Because of course she found the opportunity to shade Wendy in that. Anyway. So then um, Candace um, is asked how many times a week does she have sex? Um, and it's only twice a week. It's like, and then Kiana and her professional, she's like, girl, you need to learn how to get untired and like get to it. I was like, that part, that part, that seems like very like, 
Hmm. <laughs> I guess for me, if I had a partner, it would be more frequent. Um, anyway, so um, Rob, and being shady, asked Karen about how many partners she's had in the past five years. <laughs> Child, what sent me was Karen literally did look because Giselle called it, but she wasn't really lying. She's like, Karen literally looked like she was doing the math equation trying to figure out how she's going to like spend this or. or. <laughs> so then Karen proceeds to say, she, does this include wet dreams? So this is how she got out of it. She's like, does this include wet dreams? Because apparently women have wet dreams. I mean, you have moments where you're like, ooh, hmm. But what dreams? She's like, yeah, I don't know. And then, like, and then, so then Wendy's like, what dreams? You have what dreams? She's like, you don't know nothing about what I got going on down here. It gets, it does. That happens with me. And then Kiana's like, I know that's right. <laughs> but overall, this was actually a fun light game. And the shade was just kind of shady, but they kind of kept it pushing. And I just wish they could operate like this more regularly because it was a, it actually ended up being a fun scene to watch. All right. So then next, the ladies leave to go to the to leave to get ready to go to the beach. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the part I want to get to. Like, yeah, I need a beach vacation so bad. I'm so ready. Um, which is funny because, you know, for those who know, I do live actually by a beach in the city here, but like it's not beach weather. And beach weather in Chicago doesn't really happen to like July and August. Cause Lake Michigan is cold water. So you came really, it's it's you don't really want to go in that water before that because it's so cold. But lately our winters have been mild, so it's probably not as bad as it has been historically, but it's still really, really cold water. Um like you know, the DR and like the Caribbean, you can actually get in that water and enjoy yourself. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm hoping to do something like that pretty soon. But anyway, so um, Ashley FaceTimes her nanny to check on her kids. And she kind of does share that, like, you know, when Michael had the kids, she didn't hear from the kids or and she's starting to kind of get, you know, um, anxious because she hasn't you know heard from her kids. And the ladies actually go to lunch first by the beach. And um, Ashley actually does proceed to start op opening up because she was like, hey, I answered the question about sex earlier on. And I kind of want to elaborate more on that. And, you know, re regarding my marriage or ending of marriage, I am still legally married. I'm still trying to be somewhat respectful of it. And um, I do want to end things, but I'm just, you know security is a major part of why it's not happening yet. And uh, Wendy turns the tables while she's sharing this on me and asks, like, is this is why you're still married to Gordon? <laughs> and then Mia <laughs> went back to her old ways of lying, just lying, lying, lying. I don't know where she mentions, well, no, I had more money than him when me and Gordon first met. She's like, I had an inheritance. And all the ladies like, a stripper with an inheritance? Mia, do you know what inheritance means? <laughs> like, and then in the confessional, the producers remind her what she said. And she's like, I can't believe I said that. I mean, ma making it very clear she's lying. But she, but then she tries to clean it up, and she, and you can tell she's actually thinking as she's trying to clean clean it up. So she's thinking about another lie, basically. And she's like, "Yeah, no, it's not that. It's just there's assets and then cash. And at the time, I had more liquid assets, cash in the bank than he did. Yeah, you had more cash than he did because you were a stripper." She really be thinking we're dumb, and she cracks me up though. I, I, I'm sorry, her chaos is needed on the show, but girl, you be lying. Um, <laughs> Wendy, Kiana, um, Candace, and Karen just looking at her side eye, and they're just like, "Girl," <laughs> because both, like, all three of them, like Kiana, 
Wendy and Candace just keep asking more questions to see if she's good, how she's going to keep up with this lie. And she, she keeps it up. But, <laughs> and then Giselle's like, how did we even get here? <laughs> what is happening? And, um, Ashley does explain, she's like, well, me and, um, me and Mia actually talked about, you know, how our relationship's going. And I kind of did share with her that part of the reason why the divorce isn't happening is, you know, security. But she does mention that Michael doesn't give her money. And Karen gave that look because I don't believe it either. But um, she still feels a sense of security, which doesn't make sense. How do you feel? Well, well she, she actually does elaborate. She says, like, because if something was to ever happen as far as, like, my finances or whatever, I know, or if I get behind on something, I know I have him covered, a.k.a. she basically wants a dad. <laughs> like, it's giving daddy issues through and through, but we knew that. We've always known that about Ashley and Michael's relationship. But anyway, um, Candace does ask if she start with her life coach yet. And Ashley states, she's a confidence coach, but yes, I have, you know, started with her. And they show some on-air footage with her and this coach. And she states that um, she's helping her, like, um, set goals for herself. And she actually wants to get back to singing again. Because a housewife show would not be complete if there wasn't at least one singer or someone's trying to pursue being a singer on this show before Candace, there was Ashley. <laughs> and so, um, she actually does share like, Hey, I actually, you know, did already have a song written now. And, um, yeah, I, I have a song that I wrote and everything and it's ready. And so Candace hands her a knife, which is kind of ironic. It's a kind of an in interesting callback. She's like, well, go ahead and perform. And Ashley actually gets up and she performs. And the song was called Healing and Thriving. And it actually kind of was, it was catchy. I was like, okay, okay. I mean, she could auto-tune in and have some studio help. And actually, it would, it would hit. It was, it was a good song. It was very inspiring, too. I, hopefully, she's not just repeating the same line over and over again, though. But it was good. And all the ladies are proud of her, and even the people, in the, like the people in the background, are all you know clapping for her because she actually did sound good, and, and her voice it was all right. Um, and so then Wendy asks um, Karen about the Triple Twenties party, and Karen shares that she has a new trainer. And then they start asking all the questions about, well, who's this trainer? She wouldn't ask; she was being coy, and but she does. Let them know, like, hey, it's not the blue eye man. Like, let it go. We left him seasons ago. It's not him. So they do. So then they kind of do dead that. And the ladies actually, they're done with their lunch and they go to Cabana to the beach. And um, Robin plans for ladies to do like an Instagram photo shoot. And then the producers have their fun and like, you know, make a whole entire picture thing. Like a magazine thing as they're all posing, taking pictures. It's really cute. And um, having a good time. Everyone's bodies look amazing. Everyone looks good. And then Robin goes, after they have their little fun, Robin goes to talk to Mia, um, Giselle, and Ashley about Candace and Wendy's faces during the dinner the night before. And she's being animated saying, oh, well, that was messed up. You know, that was effed up, yada, yada, yada. And they're really talking loud. And then can't, and then also um, Giselle's like, yeah, that's messed up. I noticed it. She's like, oh, I didn't know if you noticed. It's like, girl, it was clear in the scene that that Giselle noticed it. And this is why ugh, I can't with them. Um, but the episode does end where Wendy, Candace, and Karen actually go directly to them and ask what they were talking about, and they all just look like, yeah, so. It was, a, it was a decent episode. It wasn't too bad. Um, I still want Giselle off the show. <laughs> um, Robin doesn't really bother me. Just really Giselle can be off the show because I just can't stand this manufactured drama that she keeps trying to produce. Like, stop it. 
it's not even fun drama. It's very high school, um, mean girls, annoying stuff. Like, it's not, it's, it's lame. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.